Hikaru Nakamura plays like Paul Morphy in today's game, where he uses the guiding principle that Paul Morphy used to dominate the entire chess world. This game was played at the Gibraltar Masters against Vladimir Epishin in 2007. Hikaru has the white pieces, Epishin has the black pieces. Let us jump right in. Hikaru begins with e4. Black plays c5, knight f3, e6, d4, cd4, knight d4, and a6. Hikaru is facing what is known as the Khan Sicilian. And you'll notice black has not developed any pieces at all. So the instinct of a, of a player with the white pieces here is to attack, get a lead in development and attack. The problem is the Khan is very resilient to peace pressure, frustratingly so, to be perfectly honest. The light squares are very strong, uh, but the dark squares are vulnerable. But how to get at them? That is the question. Hikaru begins with bishop to d3. One of the ideas here is not only to defend e4 and set up castling, but also to uh, not develop this knight at b1 yet, so this pawn could go to c4 and maybe clamp down on the b5 and d5 breaks. It's one of the ideas behind that move. Bishop to c5, immediately attempting to unsettle Hikaru's knight at d4. The knight goes to b3. And here the bishop can go to a7 or to e7 as played in the game. It's about 50-50 what black chooses here. And white again can play the most direct line, queen to g4, putting pressure on g7. But Hikaru chooses to develop his pieces more quickly. And that's really the guiding principle here is the lead in development. And it's really interesting how he gets a big lead against a strong grandmaster. Bishop to e3. Now d5. Now this was something of an, uh, a Vladimir Epishin patent. Um, I only have two games in my database where this move has been played here, and both times he is the one that played it. The earlier game had ended in a draw. Now he's trying, trying it against Hikaru. And what he does is he takes the pawn. And yes, black could take with the pawn, but that does leave, it, leave him with an isolated queen's pawn and uh, probably a slightly worse position. Epishin decides to take with a queen. Um, there's only one problem, and that is this queen is vulnerable to attack where Nakamura can gain a tempo. If he plays knight to c3, he would attack the queen, but this queen is also attacking the g2 pawn. So how is Hikaru going to deal with that? Well, what he does is he goes ahead and just does it anyway, not worrying about the g2 pawn. And look, there are three minor pieces developed, a big lead in development for Hikaru, uh, and he's currently gaining a tempo, and black only has the one minor piece developed. The Khan may be resilient against a, a lead in development, but it's probably not that resilient. And Epishin goes ahead and grabs that pawn. Um, pawn grabbing, and a bishop to e4 from Hikaru, placing this bishop on a strong diagonal. Of course, it attacks the queen and defends the rook, but also puts some pressure on uh, black's queen side. The queen goes to h3, and now queen to d4 attacks g7, but also just centralizes the queen and prepares long castling where this rook would land on the d-file. Uh, if bishop to f6, counterattacking the queen, then queen to a4, check, and if bishop to d7, queen to b4, uh, attacking b7, which is pinned, and the rook can't even go to a7 because this bishop is attacking it, so that would just be no good. So knight to f6 is played instead, and that does threaten to exchange off this very nice light squared bishop. Hikaru doesn't worry about that right now. He goes ahead and just castles long, and if black were to take that bishop now, then after knight to f6, white has a very strong position, threatening to just drop that knight into d6 with check and just totally wreck uh, black's position. He wouldn't be able to castle. So if he were to castle now, then rook h to g1, attacking down the open g file, and Hikaru has a very strong attack. So to avoid that, uh, Black just goes ahead and plays knight b to d7, trying to catch up in development. Now he does have three minor pieces developed, but that fourth minor piece is going to be extremely difficult to activate. Hikaru just plays rook h to g1, putting the rook on the half-open file, attacking the g7 pawn. And here Black plays g6. Um, and actually, the computer shows, strangely enough, that castling is the best move, and after rook to g3... Uh, Hikaru would have a strong attack, but black can actually play this position because of this little trick, e5, counterattacking white's queen, and if the queen moves, queen goes to e6, and it's a game. Uh, it's, <laughs> Hikaru would probably be happy here, but uh, black has a playable position. But instead he plays g6, 
and that creates a pin on this diagonal against this rook at h8 and further weakens the dark squares. Now, b6, d6, f6, and h6 are all weak, and that is a problem for black. Rook to g3 hits the queen, and the queen goes to h5. Now, if we notice in this position, black's queen is severely lacking squares. White controls all the squares along this uh, fifth rank, white's fifth rank, uh, and the queen could end up in a lot of trouble. So Hikaru must have asked himself at this point, how do I trap that queen? And his first move in an attempt to do that is bishop to g5, taking away more possible squares for the queen to run to, with the threat of bishop to f3, and if queen takes h2, rook to h1, trapping the queen. So for example, if queen to h2 here, then just rook to h1, and the queen is trapped. Uh, if e5 first, like we saw in that other variation, just queen to d2, and again, the threat of bishop to e3 is strong, so black could take on e4, but then after knight takes e4, bishop g5, rook g5, hitting the queen again, and obviously the queen can't go to h6 because rook takes pawn check and the queen would take it. So queen to h4, but then just knight to f6 check, and that's curtains because there's just too much pressure on this knight, the rook, queen, and the knight, and if knight takes knight, queen to d8 is mate. So that's a problem. Black has a tough situation. So uh, h6 is what uh, black plays. And here, bishop to f3. Um, and it might look like here that queen takes g5, just giving up some material and trying to make it a playable game was a good idea. But after rook takes queen, pawn takes knight to e4, uh, Black has some problems. Not only is the knight threatening to come into d6 with check, he still has to worry about this pin on the diagonal, and a white is still better. So instead, black goes ahead and takes on h2, prepared to trade off some material for the queen to be trapped. Now here, it would actually be a mistake for Hikaru to play rook to h1 and trap the queen. And the reason is, black could take the rook, the bishop takes queen, pawn takes, and now black's rook is attacking the bishop, the bishop moves then rook to h4. And here black is getting a, a decent active position. And in fact, he has a queen. White has a queen, but black has a rook, a bishop, and two pawns. So he's actually up uh, slightly here. So Hikaru does not play rook to h1. Instead, he plays bishop to e3, setting up the same trap, but when that, now he would keep his bishop. e5, because what... See, okay, the queen wants to have access to this square. It's the only square that it really can get to, but this queen, Hikaru's queen covers that square. So e5 is an attempt to kick the queen away so it no longer covers this square, and black can use that square to free his queen. So Hikaru plays queen to a4, pinning the knight, but also keeping an eye on this h4 square so the queen can't escape. Now e4, interfering with the queen's uh, pressure on h4, Hikaru goes ahead and takes with the knight. Now here, queen to h4 would lose to knight to d6 check with a discovery, and the queen would be lost. So knight takes e4, and that allows black's bishop to control h4. Is black finally unraveling? Bishop takes e4, and the threat of rook to h1 winning the queen is quite serious, so Epishin goes ahead and plays queen to h4. So has he succeeded? Has he successfully escaped and is he going to survive this position? Well, Hikaru shifts his attack. Knight to c5. He has three pieces, the queen, the knight, and the rook, all attacking this knight on d7, which is only defended by the bishop and king. So that's a big problem for white. So black plays the move that seems most obvious, right? b5, interfering with the pin and attacking the queen. Hikaru just centralizes the queen, and look at all of his threats. He's threatening to take the rook at h8. The bishop at e4 is threatening to take the rook at a8, and he's threatening again to still collapse on that d7 square. Black plays a bishop to f6. A move like knight to c5 would just be a mistake. The queen h takes pawn, excuse me, takes rook, and then bishop takes knight. That would be it. So bishop to f6 counterattacks the queen and defends the rook at h8, and white does not have time to take the rook at a8. So black is slippery as an eel here. Queen to d5 attacks the rook. Now here, if the rook moves, then rook to h1, and now the queen has problems again. <laughs> it doesn't have the, any flight squares anymore. Bishop takes b2 check, 
freeing up spots for the queen along this diagonal would be the only way to save it. But after king takes bishop, queen to e7, then just queen to d4, again attacking the rook. And after, say, knight f6, bishop c6 check. His position just collapses, king f8, then knight to e4 again. The pin on the f6 knight and, uh, and attack, pressure on a7, that would be it. So instead of moving the rook, black just goes ahead and grabs the knight. But after bishop takes knight in this position, black resigned. He did everything he can to escape the pressure of the huge lead in development that Nakamura had in this game. Let's look at a few more moves. Let's say bishop to g5 check, king to b1, f5 as a way to get out of the, the mating net and give the king a, a flight square. But just queen to e5 check, of course hitting the king and the rook. But uh, white has bigger fish to fry than just capturing that rook on h8. King to f7, then bishop to d5 check. And after the, the bishop e6 would be the only way uh, to def prevent immediate mate. But eventually mate would happen on f7. So we see Hikaru using what Morphe taught him and us. A huge lead in development is the key to an attack on our opponent. Thank you for joining us at Chess Dog. See you again soon. Bye.